All right, everybody, we're back. Happy Monday. If this is coming to your ears, um, I've got Taylor back in the podcast. Hello. I always said Taylor was going to be a reoccurring guest, but she actually is. And I'm going to try to have her on every like at least four. And then I'll probably end up making it even more and more and more because I think half the fun about this episode, or excuse me, this podcast in general, but about episodes is advice. And when it's coming from sisters, because we are similar, but we are actually just absolutely not the same. Yeah. It's really fun. And Tay is like, technically, are we in the same generation? Yeah. We figured that out. Remember? Oh, recently. Wait, wait. So what am I? I'm, I'm a Gen Z. We're a Gen. Yeah. We're Gen Z. Oh my God. Sometimes I don't even know. Sometimes like, people help. are like, they say like Gen Z's are such losers. And then I'm looking, I'm sitting there in the room like, cause me. you're definitely not a millennial. No, what? I'm not 45. <laughs> Or wait, <laughs> but that's not wait. Funny. I forget the I order. I know, but I forget. We the figured this out. We are both the same. Okay, got it. Yeah, you I made like it. Gen Zs have such a bad rap. I don't know why. I know, but they do. We're but also they're, the they're future. literally the future. So yeah. I'm like everyone who hates on Gen Zs. Good luck, buddy, because that's who's going to be running our companies. Mm -hmm. So figure it out. Okay, figure, figure it out. <laughs> Of course, we did the same thing at the same time. Um, if you're hearing this, you actually have about I think it would be two weeks to um, go to my link in bio and get registered for my event. I'm so excited. If you're in the Minneapolis market, you should absolutely come. If you haven't seen it on social media, I have not even said it on the podcast yet. And I think we already have 65 people signed up. Yeah, yeah. I'm capping it around 120 to 150. I haven't decided. Usually people don't sign up until like week of event, but yeah. I love if you could do it early because I need to be able to get all the things that we need for the event. And I need to know how many people are coming, but basically the event is going to be with can it's going to be at a brewery. Um, and we're going to do a live show. We're going to have live advice. It's going to be a girl's night. So bring your friend. Um, it's $25. It's going to just be so much fun. And we're going to paint glasses that you get to take home. We have a full goodie bag that you get to take home. Um, there'll be photo ops. There's going to be a woman doing free tooth gems. Um, Hell yeah. there's going to be people doing, I mean, oh my God, I literally can't even name all the vendors. I'm losing my mind, but anyway, you will get your money's worth. Trust me. And I won't have another one until at least summer. So please, I hope to see you there. If you're in the Minneapolis market, is it on a Friday? I can't remember. It's on a Friday night. Okay. Yeah. Friday night on the 22nd link in bio. It's just, it says register for event and it's going to be so much fun. It's and called like sip or sip and pod. I thought it's sip paint and pod. Yeah. I, um, grab your friends if you want to, like if you're yeah. not comfortable coming alone, like grab your friends and also you'll meet so many girls, girls in the Minneapolis area. The theme is going to be about meeting people. Like the theme of the podcast is about like girls energy and like relationships and getting advice from the girls in the crowd, like of like literally relationship advice. And it doesn't, it's anonymous. It doesn't have to be like coming from your name, but it's going to be just such good energy. I feel like. Yeah. I'm excited. Also, I got the nicest message today. And I just want to share it because oh, yeah. I read it. I got tears in my eyes at work and I just have to read this to you guys because I was, I was shocked. This person sent me a message today. So the Dr. Lavelle episode is out at the same time. So she said, I listened to your new episode this morning. I just have to say you're such an incredible host. And then she says something about the episode and she says, you handled it so gracefully. I've become, um, I've become a well-said fan and I love the direction you've taken the podcast. You're doing exactly what you've been called to do. And it's so evident as a regular listener. Oh my gosh. I love that. It like made me freaking emotional because yeah. it's hard sometimes. I mean, you sit next to me, like you understand, um, to an extent, but I'm doing this just solo. Like I'm just like out here on the mic you know, guessing what people want for, you know, content. I still have a nine to five. I still coach. So it can't even be my main focus. And you're doing all the social. Like, yeah. Everything that takes a lot of work. Yeah. Doing the events and I'm happy. It's just, sometimes you forget, like you don't, you don't forget why you're doing it. You forget like that people are listening. Yeah. And it's nice to hear that people. And that are was a good sometimes. reminder to you to just keep going. Cause you're doing such a good job and have a little confidence, Yeah, which is with, literally the theme of yeah. today. I literally wrote the title as Girls, confidence building, self-love, and it girl energy. So let's just talk about it girls, but I'm going to play a write-in, or excuse me, a call-in um, that we're going to answer to because it's about it girls and okay. I, it's exactly about the episode. Hope you're doing well. I was just calling to get your advice on um, how do you actually become that confident it girl? 
you know, you hear everybody telling all the females, you know, love yourself, you know, support one another, blah, blah, blah. But what steps have worked for you in the past to actually make you feel that way about yourself, to actually believe, you know, that you deserve to be confident, you deserve to be loved, single or not, you know, this could be advice for a single woman or a married woman. I'm personally married, but I just want more advice on how to feel more comfortable in my skin, walk around with my head high and feel like, you know, I deserve to be happy. I deserve to feel beautiful and no, but, and not to allow anybody to take that away and what your advice would be. Thank you very much. And I hope you have a great day. Oh my God. I love that. Oh, it makes me kind of emotional. I don't mm-hmm. know why I feel like the fact that someone is asking me that question means that people are looking at me like I, I know everything and I definitely don't. And that, that I'm so thankful that people trust me with their advice. Um, but let's just talk about becoming an it girl and what that looks like right now. And then we're going to answer this question. So becoming an it girl, like this is the girl who has it all together, has the job, has the relationship, has the 10 step workout routine, never misses a workout. The what skincare else? routine, the, skincare. the perfect clothing, all the new trends, trendy things. Perfect at social media. Yep. Um, Always has plans. You can see it on social media. Um, has the perfect bed night r- bedtime routine, has green, cute pajamas. Like yeah. what the hell? Green juice smoothies every morning. Yep. Or, like all of those yeah. things. Like has like a random hobby. No one, no one is this and you, but you are allowed to be confident. So no one is the it girl, but you are allowed to have confidence. Were you going to say something about that? Yeah. I just think a lot of people can relate to social media showing us this it girl. And sometimes it is something you want to be like, and you're like, oh, this makes me want to do this. I want to be more confident or productive, but every person is different. And what social media is showing is literally not real. Yeah. It's not, none of it is real. None of it. I can attest to that. That's why half the time I stop posting because I am deep in the trenches of my work or I am having a really hard week or I am like feeling turmoil. Like today, something happened with an event partner that, um, I'm literally planning for this event. I have to, I'm going to be gone this weekend and it's like not good. Like I'm a little freaked out about it. Like, so it's just like, it's all happening. And you see on social media, the high high reel, we hear that all the time. I'm telling you right now, this concept of the it girl is not a real thing. Yeah. It is not a real thing to have it together all the time, to know what the heck you're doing with your life every second, to be perfect and pretend to be perfect. I hate pretending and I hate when people pretend. It girl should have a new definition and it should just be somebody who's developing confidence with each stage of their life. That's yeah. what I think an it girl is. And I think also to add to that, get rid of the stereotype of what an it girl is should be or what society shows you or social media. Mm -hmm. And I think an it girl is just someone who's confident in whatever the hell they do. Mm -hmm. And they're not, they're just doing it for themselves. Oh my God. Exactly. I think you hit whatever that that. is. It's not just someone who likes to work out. It can be anything that it girl. Exactly. I think to, um, what kills this it girl mentality and like what Taylor's talking about is what it is, is it's confidence is what you want, but what kills it. And so much of what killed it for me is my loss of self-confidence and my anxiety. So what you need to do, and this, remember I'm saying remove these things, but this is like over time learning how to remove it because really it's actually about lessening them. So like I wrote down fear of rejection, um, fear of being worth, um, being unworthy of love, fear of ruining something like that you created, like a relationship or a friendship, fear that you aren't pretty enough. Yeah. Fear of being hurt and like self-sabotage. That's something I did for a while, yep. definitely in relationships and just with even getting a new job, like thinking I'm not good enough. I won't get that interview. It's just that you don't have that confidence and you have to build it to get there. Um, fear of being unhappy, And also that ties into not being in the present moment and just worrying about the future. That's something also I used to do a lot. And you're just, you're not valuing the present moment when you're just constantly worrying about the future. Yeah. So it's fear, fear, fear. It's like this, um, instead of being present, you're fearful. Instead of being confident, your inner monologue is anxious and mean. But a lot of what confidence is, is correcting your inner monologue. Yes. Because 
really, truly confidence is internal. You're never going to get the confidence from external. Even if you can think about when a guy, um, liked your profile on hinge or said you were hot, it's an instant, like little woo dopamine, like, like, you know, what that is it called? External Spike. validation. Yeah. External validation does not last no. because then what happens when that guy tells this other girl she's hot now you're hurt. But what in what world did he get to decide if you were going to be hot or not? Like, excuse me. I think a huge growth period where I just had um, with where I'm at in life is just finding that validation within myself. Mm -hmm. Like for once in my life, I'm not looking for validation from men or using that to make me feel confident. I'm actually doing other things that makes me feel really good about myself. That's huge. Yeah. And honestly, a lot of that too is like, stopping living in the fear when I was talking about this is like the rejection part of that. Like, I don't care if I were to get rejected from a job, yeah. from a friend, maybe that you reached out to that you thought looked cool online and you were like, Hey, I'd love yeah. you like whatever. Um, I get rejected all the time from people not wanting to come on the podcast because they see something from old content or, you know, like they don't think it's big enough for them, you know, like, but I'm not afraid of that anymore. And I think when it comes to those types of things, the power of ask is like, the worst, what the worst thing that could happen is they say no. Okay. And what I'm confident in knowing my worth. Um, I'm confident enough in that. And you have to remember too, that the people around you see and can like, think about your best friends. They can tell you, Oh my God, you're amazing. Like you're amazing. Um, I like, I think you're amazing at your job. You're like so powerful. You're a boss bitch. And how could you not have confidence hearing that? Or like, yeah. how can you not be like that person sees my worth? why don't I see my worth? You know what I mean? Coming from someone you care about. Yeah. And also just going back to the rejection, mm -hmm. rejection is redirection. That's what I always oh. remind myself in my head. Cause that's just with any type of thing, with a relationship, with job, with anything, like you're getting redirected onto the path that you're supposed to be on. Yep. I'm just realizing like truly, like I said, like living in the present moment, all of these fears, hurt, self-sabotage, worthy of love, unhappiness, ruining something, fear that you're not pretty enough or not work, you know, fit enough. What all these things, it's all in here. And I feel like as women, oh my God. we go, I can have really good weeks of confidence Same. and then I can also feel like an ugly little rat. Well, but that's also <laughs> the phases of, of your period too. Yeah. Like, and, or well, your phases of your menstrual cycle, I should say not just your period. Cause that's a part of it. But I'm just saying like, I, last week, first of all, I thought I was going to murder someone. Didn't know I could do that. <laughs> Second of all, everyone was pissing me off and I felt terrible. I had like two zits and I was spazzing and I'm like, oh my God. I was like, I have the worst skin. I'm so like ugly. Yeah, la, la, la. It's hard. Horrible self-talk, but it's about controlling the snap out of it because it takes time. Like think about you just like for a second, let's sit back for a second. Think about you in middle school. I was validated by anyone who said I was cute or attractive or like noticed by somebody to like validate that I would be like, Oh my God, I'm actually not a nerd. I'm kind of cool because I was afraid of those things. Okay. Yeah. High school validated by being chosen for a sports team and being chosen in class on like a committee and, um, getting like the older guy to like me. That was validation for me. College being selected by a sorority, right. Being thought to be fun and like having a lot of friends right now you go into work being chosen for the job. It's all these external validations, but what changed is first of all, what matters because jobs do matter, but it's not about being chosen. It's about showing up for something and showing that you can be there and carrying yourself with confidence and caring about you because nobody cares about you like you and everybody, nobody's watching like, um, you're watching yourself. Yeah. So it's all about internal confidence and realizing like, Oh my God, all these years I've cared about things that were external to me. Yeah. And I think oh. that internal confidence with even work, for example, if you don't get that raise or the promotion, you have that internal confidence to let you know that, okay, it's okay. My time will come. It's not that you're not good enough. Yeah, exactly. You don't need that. Again, though, changing the inner dialogue. So we talked about like needing to be present and like present, excuse me. The secret to confidence is excuse being present. Excuse me. Me, 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 me. Um, I literally did not sleep last night and I barely had coffee today and I had a big presentation. So my brain's a little bit like scramble town. But what do you think about like being present? Like what, what is your, what are your thoughts on that? Okay. I think What's really, really helped me, and it sounds so like easy, but it's actually kind of hard to adapt a new routine or habit. Yeah. My daily gratitude journal. 
Oh, that, I love that you still so do I, that. Yeah. Every morning and night I do it. Um, I honestly forgot the name of it. So, oh, sorry. I can't plug it. <laughs> Not the, oh, the daily stoic. I do yeah. both daily stoic and then the five minute gratitude journal oh, yeah, every day. I love that one. And that's actually been, it was hard at first to get into that routine to remember. And sometimes you're like, I'm too tired. I don't really feel like writing in a journal, but I think it honestly really helps me to start my day with what am I grateful for? Three yeah. things only. And it's really so easy. It can be something as I'm grateful for healthy food to eat mm -hmm. or a car to drive me to work in the gym. Um, and then also just reflecting on your day back. It's just like, it helps you notice the little things or, um, I had lunch with a friend at work, all those little things that makes you just more grateful. And that's how I practice my presence. Oh, I love that because it's also about like choosing to see the good yeah. because when you see the bad, you spiral. And when you spiral, your brain will tell you mean things. And when your brain is telling you mean things, you're not confident. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It all is interconnected. I also, I wrote down like having me time means everything to me that like when I spend time on my work, I'm in confident that I won't lose my job too. Like, so these are separate. I wrote them together, but like me time means everything to me. Like I have to have me time to reflect on my thoughts and sit and think about like, okay, my podcast, actually, what does it, what matters to me? Cause when I'm running around my day and I'm like, Oh my God, I didn't post the reel. I didn't post a TikTok. I'm probably going to lose followers. Holy shit. This is such a mess. Like I'm not good enough for this. I mean, you name it. It sp starts to spiral. When I make time for my thing, I sit down, I do the hard thing, which sometimes is literally just posting the reel. I'm reminded that I can. And then I'm also reminded of like, wait a minute, I'm not doing this for followers. I'm not doing this with, for fear of losing people. I'm doing this for, to help people for myself to have an outlet, but to help people know that they're not alone. So like, I need that me time to reflect on all of my things and like go through my head and be like, okay, I'm actually grounded. I'm good. Yeah. Like I actually know why I'm doing this. I'm good. I wrote down to like, when I spend time on my work and I don't dilly dally or go on my phone all day, I'm confident that I won't lose my job. It's this simple. Like when I spend time with Jordan and really do intentional time, I am confident in my relationship again. It's almost like the anxiety and the scramble. And again, the not being present will ruin your thought process and your confidence. It's true. The more stressed I am and rushed and running from thing to thing, the less confident I feel. Yeah. I agree so. with all of that. One thing to add, um, just I guarantee if you spend a little less time on your phone and social media, you're going to feel a little happier and also you're going to be more present in the moment. I think now as I've gotten older, I really value when I can go out with my girlfriends and get a drink or whatever we're doing and we're not all looking at our phone. Like yeah, you can actually sit there and not reach for it and talk about things in life. Um, I think that is a huge reminder I do for myself each week is okay, if I'm feeling really moody and comparing myself, then maybe I spend a little less time on Instagram. Yep. Okay. Cause that's literally the factor. It never it. makes me feel better. No. Do I ever feel like, I don't think it does that for a lot of people of making people feel really happy. Like there's, I mean, there's a difference between like going on a vacation and taking pictures of things. But yeah. I always say like, what part of dinner am I going to remember that the part where we're all on our phones or the part where we talked about something that we all like yeah. cracked our yeah. up about. Cause it was like a funny story from the past. Like yeah. those are all things too. I wanted to say, I remember having such bad confidence that when I got up from the table from like having a dinner with girlfriends, like this is probably high school or something, who knows what time period I was afraid that they were going to talk shit about me when I walked away. That's how little confidence I had. Like you're constantly worrying about what people, how people are perceiving of you. But the fact of the matter is one, they weren't going to talk shit about me probably. I mean, it's high school, who knows? Cause high school is just such a different time of everybody's lives, yeah. but still, um, the more you think about yourself in those negative settings, the more that, that those thoughts are going to take over and it's just going to put you backwards, right? It's still going backwards in your head, but get, guess what? The situation didn't change at all. You still left the table. You still left the dinner. You still got up. You still probably had a good time at dinner. The situation stayed the same. The thoughts in your head were what were changing how you perceived everything that happened. So that's what ruined your confidence. It's not the situation. It's the thought process. Yeah. So rewriting the thought process is going to be everything for you. Mm -hmm. Just retraining your brain to be on your side and be happy for you. Exactly. Yeah. So that, that's what I feel like an it girl is. And I'm, we're going to talk about what confidence look like, but, um, I just, 
uh, I just feel like confidence is really hard. It, it it's is. a hard thing to attain. It's not, I don't know. I, I would just say like when I, like this girl who did that right in the beginning talks about like, you know, being deserving of love. Of course you're deserving of yeah. love. Of course you're deserving of a good job and good friends and a good routine. But the half of that is one looking at your life and saying, what can I clean up now of my life? Like, what am I in control of? What am I just like feeling bad for myself with and not fixing? Like for me, like when I'm like, I'm so mad. I didn't do my workout this week. It's like, bitch, you didn't make time for it. <laughs> you literally sat on your ass and maybe that your body needed that that week. And that's a good thing, but I need to recognize it as that for the weeks when I needed movement. And I just sat on my ass and like, you know, twiddled my thumbs and sat on my phone. And then I was like, I was so busy today. It's like, no, you could have been much more structured yeah. and felt so much better. That's in my control, right? That is part of it too. But you are so deserving on the other side of everything that you want. Half of it you have to go for and half of it you have to accept that it will happen to you because you're a good person, because you're putting good energy out in the world. And because who on this planet can you think of that's not deserving of love? So why would you not be deserving of love? Tell me that. Mike drop. Mike drop. Oh, oh shit. Scary dude. Now I feel like I'm in a little tiny fog cloud really? floating above the room. Yeah. My brain is like, oh, now let's go into confidence. What that looks like. Okay. Deal. Cause we also have to get to our wine date. Afterwards. We're going with, um, to dinner with our cousins after this and we're going to be late. <laughs> yes. Okay. 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 Number one, saying no to plans, making time for you. Oh my God. This is something that I feel like a lot of people want to do, but it, it seems like it's so easy, but it really is hard when it's actually in the moment mm -hmm. and it's kind of uncomfortable. Um, but I think saying no and being confident in what you want to, how you want to spend your time, whether if you don't want to do a dinner, or go out, say no and be confident in that your decision and not yeah. care about what they're going to think. Because if they're a good friend, kind of like what we talked about in our last episode together, if they're a good friend, um, like a quick switch up or like sometimes not coming won't change your relationship. Yeah. Which you need to know and have confidence in your relationship to know that. Like yeah. me saying no to my closest friends, they do not care. Like a rain check shouldn't be that big of a deal. No. And if it is a big deal, then maybe that's a relationship you shouldn't feel confident in because it's not good for you. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, I wrote down confidence looks like knowing who you are, that you are a good person and that you can be forgiven by yourself and by others. And what do I mean by that? You're a good person. I literally, my anxiety tells me sometimes I'm not a good person. I make so many mistakes. Oh my God. My parents hate me. My sister hates me. My friends hate me. Um, people at work <laughs> don't like me. I'm going to lose my job. It's like, no, take a breath. And if I, yes, yeah, some days at work, I've made mistakes where I've been a little sassy or I've responded illly to an email and I apologize. Like, I'm like, Hey, if that came off strong, I totally apologize. Was not my intention. Um, I just, this, that, and the other thing. And every time, what do they say? All good. I didn't even perceive it as that or all good. It happens. Um, texts or emails can maybe come off differently yeah. than what you mean. And I know deep down, I'm a good person. I know that I am a good person deserving of my job. I need to be confident in that. And I forgive myself, but when you can't forgive yourself, your confidence just goes and I think down the confidence window. Confidence is also correcting your mistakes. Yep. Like yes, you saying. absolutely. You're confident in yourself and correcting that. Cause it's worse. The worst type of person is the person that can't say sorry. Exactly. Or can't admit to like, Oh, that could have been perceived wrong. I, I yeah. didn't realize that if you can't do that, you need to get confident in yourself. That's a step forward. Slay. Slay all day. Okay. Um, I also wrote down confidence looks like trusting your judgment that you made a choice for a reason and dwelling on it isn't worth it and definitely will not change the past. So you have to be positive in, I made a decision and I trust my own judgment because I dwelled on it and I guarantee you did. You went pros, cons, pros, cons all over. We always do it in our heads. If you made a choice because your gut was telling you about it, confidence in that decision is key. You made the choice for a reason, freaking ride it out. That one, I think trusting your judgment is really hard for me. It is hard, but you have sometimes to you want, like I'll go to my mom or sister. And I'm like, can you just make the decision for me? I always say no to, I'm like, no, well, no shit. But I just, I don't know. It's just sometimes hard because you, again, I'm building my confidence is a work in progress and Same. you're building that trust in yourself. And so some, I don't know, my 
trusting my judgment is it will take time. Of course it does, yeah. but it's practicing it. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's like doing the hard thing. And then you're like, Oh God, I did the hard thing. Yeah. That was a lot. And it'll e- get easier and simpler over time. Confidence looks like talking kindly to yourself and being gentle with yourself. Like I mean it, all those internal thoughts, that internal dialogue needs to be kind. Like, why are we bullying ourselves in our head? That's so icky. Think of the, this is what I always see on TikTok. What? Think of the little girl you once were. Yeah. And how would you want her to be talking about herself? Exactly. I think it makes me sad. It makes me sad too. And I sometimes think about how, what would you say if you knew how badly I was talking to myself? Or like, what would, what would I say if I I heard the same things? that you were, that I was saying to myself that you were saying to yourself, I would be sick. I'd be like, yeah. what is wrong with you? Like, why would you we're say that to yourself? All our biggest critics. And it's just so like sad. Even when I'm looking in the mirror and I'm like, I have a little like imperfection or zit or something like that. I would never ever look at somebody else and say, look at that. Like, <laughs> whoa, that's distracting. They're ugly. Like what the hell is wrong with our brains thinking that is a dictator yeah. of, our beautifulness, our confidence, our, you know, like how we show up in the world, like get the fuck out of here. And that makes, that has no correlation to you as a person. No. Your looks. It's, and God, it's like, or if you have a fucking mountain pimple on your face, regardless, (laughs) literally me right now. (laughs) That was a Um, side. (laughs) I know that was a sidebar to me. What's going on? I'm kidding. Um, talking Um, kindly to yourself though, just like be nice to yourself. Like when you have a hard day, have that like grace to just be light on yourself. When you make a mistake, don't, swear at yourself in your head when you're not feeling good about your body do Fucking not talk shit. about it i know a little i swear to Same. like to the world i don't swear to myself but there are no wins when you're being mean to yourself zero wins that's true um another thing being confident in the fact that it will all work out visualize mm. a confident version of you you remember your work in progress just like your confidence um and get rid of that victim mindset. I oh used to God. be stuck in that shit for a I while. Used to, I ain't going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I, I would tell stuck. Taylor. I'm I would like, say, yeah. you ain't a victim, honey. I'm like, okay. But once I realize, and it really, it's only you that can really decide that. But once you realize, okay, not all b- bad things are happening to me. I can make decisions. Then you'll realize your confidence. Like it literally used to be like, I hit a red light and I'm like, why does this happen to me? It's like, Jesus. (laughs) I'm trying to think of examples, but I actually can't right now. I would just say like, when you feel like your world is crumbling, like it's actually like not crumbling. Yeah. And you think you're just like the victim in that and that everyone else is doing fine. Another one, accept the praise that you receive. Don't downplay your achievements. Yes. I have a hard time with this. Which also our mom does too. So it's kind of hard, but I think this is a lot of women struggle with this because we're kind of in that a society where men are more, um, congratulated. I don't know how to say that. (laughs) Congratulations. Congratulations. That's all that came in my head. I was like, (laughs) but do you know what I mean? I can't, I know what you're saying. They're praised more. Yeah. Yeah. And it's normal to be praised and they can like, it's almost like it's, it's normal for men to be like, thank you. Yeah. And for (laughs) women, it's like, Oh, I should. No, 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 I haven't. I'm not pretty. No, please. No, No, I'm not. It's like so awkward. Even that, like, I think this is a quick reminder of like retraining your mindset. Like Mm -hmm. when someone says, oh, I love your hair. It looks good. Don't say no, it doesn't be like, oh, thank you. Yeah. Say thank you. Say thank you. Like I'm talking to myself right now. Yeah. Me too. Or like, oh, you look really pretty. Like thank them. Don't just be like, oh no, I look ugly. Yeah. And that's also like, you're like, what? Yeah. I just said you look pretty. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I wouldn't say it if I didn't mean it. Exactly. Um, confidence looks like knowing when it's too much, like slowing down. It kind of sisters to the saying no, but like, like I said, when you're moving too fast, you will not be confident because you'll feel scurried. You'll feel in a rush. AKA AKA sit over here. Hi, how are you? Scurry McGee. Okay. Okay. You've been getting better, but I no, I am better. Okay. I'm not getting better. I am. Well, it's better. a work in progress. It is a work in progress. It is a work in progress, but I, I do need to work on it. And I will say when I'm scurrying, I'm not confident. It's literally <laughs> my worst mental health days. So I'm not joking. Um, so I'm getting better again, work in progress, right? We're telling all these things because we're work in progress. Um, confidence looks like knowing, um, that how you look is not how you're valued. You are unique and you are beautiful. And comparison will literally never help you out. We have to stop wishing we look like somebody else. And we have to realize 
we were born this way. Like freaking Lady really Gaga says, <laughs> you, this is how you're going to look. Some people were born just that look different. Everybody looks different. Some people were just born where society says, oh, wow, that's unique. And that's, that's more beautiful than this out of the other thing. Get the fuck out of here with that. Comparison is the thief it's, of joy. It's the thief of joy. Social media is a lie. You can't even tell me that majority of people don't edit their photos because they do. And guess what? Why are we paying attention to that? What about the people on paper? What about the amazing accomplishments you've done and the volunteering that you do and your family and all like the house of, let's say like, if you've got a bunch of kids, like the house of five that you're uplifting every day and raising, like, I don't give a shit if you are societally told you're pretty, like, let's, let's focus on what's actually important here. Yeah. And that changes everything. You should have confidence about the things that you've accomplished and the things you've done and who you are as a person and how far you've come. Not about how many likes you get on an Insta post because yeah. it's a selfie. Not saying don't post a selfie because I still do. I yeah. post a selfie here and there. It's fun. I'm a but, hoe for Instagram stories of like okay. food. I love posting Taylor food. Does. Taylor does. People she keep it. telling me that when they get when they get to know me, they're like, they're like, oh, the first thing I like notice about you, you like food. And I'm like, yeah, yep, that's a, that's a fact. <laughs> but if you can't appreciate your your uniqueness, then why not blend in with everybody else, right? And one thing to add on that, just like what helps me with comparison is remembering that no one that meets you remembers you for your looks. They remember you for how you made them feel. Yeah, exactly. Fucking mic drop that Oh my bitch. God, slay. Literally slay. Slay. That was fucking good. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, this is confidence looks like knowing that you're deserving of things, deserving of all things, love, all the things I named. <laughs> what? What? Sorry, I always have to get one giggle. Why out. did you laugh at me? I don't know. Why you, you said deserving of love, and then you're like all the things, and you said one thing. Sorry. I don't know. I'm like a little I know. brain dead today, but that that'll happen to the best of us. Don't laugh at me, sister. I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, deserving of love and jobs and friendships and happiness and the savings account you've been wanting to build and all of these things are their confidence. You have to know I am deserving of that thing in order to obtain that thing. It's just like the saying, if you don't have confidence and you're not able to love yourself, then other people can't love you. I don't think that's fully true. I think people can still love you in your journey to confidence, but if you are not putting work into yourself, then I think it's hard to put work into other things around you because you'll cloud yourself yeah. and then you'll search for validation in something else. Like, well, if he doesn't tell me I'm pretty, I must not be pretty. If he doesn't tell me he loves me, we might, I must not be worthy of love. You know, it just, it curates this spin and it's not good for you. Finally, confidence looks like knowing that your life is in your control. You have control to make change. You have control to get rid of bad friends, a bad job, take a risk, make those You've, boundaries. You have to change and make a step into your, like, honestly, out of your comfort zone, I should say yeah. out of your comfort zone and into the uncomfortable to change and be confident in doing that. Your decision is right. You have control and just take a step forward. I feel like the one thing that I'm working the hardest on right now in my confidence journey is decisiveness because I am so indecisive. I feel like I am too. But it's from our parents. I it's know. from our mom. She's like, what are we going for dinner? Um, and then we'd sit there. <laughs> um, and I go, mom, how about, okay. She goes, you, you guys pick, you guys pick. That was I'm literally like, last okay, night. Uh, chicken. I last night when I mean, we had, so um, have an we opinion. were, we were having carrots. We had the, first of all, really what? weird quickly. Oh. We last night, Sid and then me and my mom cooked separate dinners. We were literally making the exact same thing. It's kind of weird. It's fucking weird. We had, um, meatballs. Italian meatballs, carrots. carrots. I just forgot what a carrot <laughs> is called. Carrots. <laughs> carrots. <laughs> and I don't know why I talk like a caveman sometimes. Um, and mom was literally having trouble deciding if we should put feta on the carrots. And I had to fucking grab that container and be like, yeah, we're, we're putting doing the freaking feta on the carrots. I just, it, she's like, ah, we get it from you. Also, it's kind of fun to get older and like, look at your parents like, okay, yes, they're the most amazing person on the planet. They raised you, but they're also so human now. Yeah. And you see their little hiccups and things that they're still working on and how that shaped you. And in the kindest way, seeing that indecisiveness in my mom and how it translated into me made me want to be more decisive yeah. than ever because I don't want to continue on that path, yes. to be honest. And I mean that in the kindest way because yeah. she did so amazing with us but I just have to say that. Okay. How do we gain confidence? Like, where do you even start? Taylor and I are going to rattle uh, like down our list yeah. and just talk about it. Um, first 
find a role model. That's a really easy way to start. Um, honestly, growing up, always looked up to Sid mm -hmm. and I talk about her to my, my friends. And now I literally talk nonstop about her. She's obsessed with me. Well, she's obsessed she's, with me. She's but I'm obsessed, obsessed with you. Yeah. I'm obsessed with but you. But I think just picking, it can be anyone, um, someone at work, like an older friend. I don't know. Even an influencer, if you value like what they do and who they are, mm -hmm. um, that can be an easy way to like practice what they do and look up to that. Yeah. Cause you see their confidence radiating yeah. and you're like, wait a minute, I can attain that too. Yeah. Celebrate the little wins with yourself. Like truly every little thing in your life is a win. And I think if we celebrate the little moments, like Tay was talking about slowing down, seeing the beauty in life, your confidence will grow. Like the fact, like even the fact that I can make an, my own coffee at home with my Nespresso, I'm literally obsessed, like absolutely obsessed, like buy it. If you have a Starbucks problem, buy it. I'm not joking. And I make this little coffee and like, I can sit on my couch for 20 minutes and like take a second, yeah. like something about that mood booster and the little things in life brings me up, gives me a little refresher, you know, big breath of fresh air. And then like, I don't know, it sits well in my confidence. I can't really describe why those two go hand in hand, but they just do. Yeah. I was, I also wrote down reflection on positives. I used to dwell on like, did I say something weird? Did I see something <laughs> weird at the bar? Did I do something weird when I was drinking? Did I la la la, whatever. Stop with that. Stop with that. It's not helping you reflect on the positives. Like when I go to bed, I think about, oh my God, how lucky am I to have this amazing family? We're so lucky for our health. I'm so lucky for the partner that I have right now. Like I can't wait to marry him. All of those things, positive energy. And then guess what? I'm not having nightmares every time I go to bed. When I do have nightmares though, let me just tell you, I'm literally thinking about anxiety before I go to bed and then I have a nightmare. It's I have crazy. That too. And it's always fucking cheating. Mine nightmares. are subconscious, like weird things. Yeah. And then I wake up but and I look I'm at Jordan and I'm like, I'm going to hit you. <laughs> you want to fucking go? Um, another one, self-care. Indulge in self-care. This is something I've taken on in the past like year, I'd say. Mm -hmm. And it really helps with confidence because you're actually thinking about taking the time to better yourself and like yeah. take care of yourself. It yes. sounds like, oh, a face mask, putting it on like, oh, whatever. But like, it actually is, you're taking that time to make yourself feel better. That builds your confidence. I literally have a weird thing where like self-care is a, a mocktail to me. Yeah. Like my sleepy time oh mocktail God, is self-care time. Me and too. I do it. I'm not joking. Almost every single night. Me too. And I, it makes me happy. Poppy, cranberry, yep. tart juice. I do cherry, but Oh yeah. shit. I do that too. Oh shit. Oh shit. <laughs> and then magnesium poppy. calm powder. And I usually put some carbonated water in there. Okay. Oh, it's so good. Okay. <laughs> okay. And then also if you're feeling, okay, I don't know where to start. Like these all seem great. Write a list of what makes you genuinely happy mm -hmm. and start doing some of those things. And especially this has helped me with during my work week when it literally feels like I'm doing slow motion <laughs> of mundane things and life feels like it's like on a circle repeat. <laughs> hamster um, wheel what helps me and someone actually at work one of my coworkers told me this try to do little things throughout the week that make you happy yeah and one of ours is like going to see our cousins and getting wine mm -hmm. at a fun place like little things like that really do help they really really do and then also I had one more thing, positive circle. The people you surround yourself with have such an effect on your confidence because are they supportive? Are they the ones where you leave the hangout and you know that they've got your back or are you, they talking shit? Are they talking shit? About <laughs> are they you? talking shit? But like, seriously, I think your people, the people you surround yourself with and spend your time with are really going to be on that journey with you to help yes. you build that confidence and be supportive of you when you do have those days of, oh God, like this happened they'll be there to be there for you. There's a difference in a friend that's judging you and a, the friend that is actually like saying something because it needs to be said. An example, Maho, my friend, she told me, you are literally running around like a chicken with your head cut off. You need to slow down for your own good. Old me, not confident, bothered. I'd be like, Maho, that's really hurtful and like rude. Like get out of my face. I don't want you to hear that. Like <laughs> that's so rude. I can't believe she said that. Me sitting here right now, and when she told me, thankfully, is that's a real friend who is worried about my well being and wants to see me succeed. I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna let that like have a little chip on my shoulder for a second and take it and go do something about it. Like yeah. slow down, make active steps forward. And then, you know, ask her, like, what do you see? Like, do you think I need to slow down with this, that, or the other thing if you need help? But it helped me. That person cared about me. You know what I mean? Not dwelling on the past 
mistakes, friendships, exes, men, dwelling on the past in any capacity is not going to allow you to live in the present. Remember, this is about being present. It's not about the future. It's not about what already happened. It's about right now. Like I tell my workout people, we already did the half, you know, half of the workout. That half is done. Forget about it. And let's start from right this second, right here, right now. Don't worry about what you've already done. Don't worry about what's coming. Just do what's in front of you right now. Mm -hmm. That's what I say. You picking who you want to date. So as far as dating and confidence goes, you have to be the one that picks the person. I've said this before. My grandma told me, stop picking. Oh my God, I'm going to say this wrong. Stop letting men pick you. You need to pick your partner and you need to be confident in that. Why would you let people just be like, oh my God, I want her. And you'd be like, me? Oh, me? You said I'm pretty. Okay, I'll go on and say it with Mm -hmm. you. It's like, no, you don't even, do you even care about this person? You already knew you're badass. Like, take a second, take a breath and be like, "Mm, do I want to date that? Yeah. Do I, did I, was I interested in you until you told me you liked me or thought I was pretty? Mm, No. Just because they're pursuing you doesn't mean they're the right one. Exactly. And then this is my confidence reminder for ladies, especially my single ladies, reminder that man that broke your heart that you saw for six months, you did not know him six months ago. So you will be just fine. He was nothing to your life. You will be just fine. If you did not know him six months ago and you could go about your life and go do your workout routine and get off your ass and make yourself a coffee and go on a coffee date with friends, you're going to be okay. I promise you. Oh my God. Confidence really is self-love and self-worth. So like I just, I want people to have more self-love for themselves and know that they're worth it too. Yeah. And I think we'll, a lot of people will look back and wish when we're like moms and be like, oh, I wish I would have like realized my self-worth back then. I know. And that strong girl that we all are. Um, But I also think one thing about my self-worth is I actually got a rose tattoo on my Mm -hmm. side. That's kind of a symbol of my self-love. So that's my favorite flower. So it's kind of something that reminds me every day and I love it. Yeah. I love that. I love your little tattoo. It's funny. Cause I'm going to say this last comment and then we're going to do a little bit more advice, but, um, people say like, I remember I used to get offended when people were like, Oh, you're an Aries. You're such an Aries. They can be so hot headed and like emotional, but like also like the light, they love attention life of the party. And I remember being like, Oh my God, I could take that so offensively. And then I, I realized I'm like, no, that's exactly who I am. I changed the tone of how I received information. I'm like, yep. yeah, I am. I love being like the life of the party. Yeah. I can be a little like confident and sometimes a little like, well, not a, attacking. I wouldn't like say that as a compliment, but I'm saying like assertive, I guess would be the way. And yeah, I, I like who I am actually. And I'm, I'm still developing myself every single day, but I've come damn far and I'm confident in who I am today and I'm excited for who I'm going to be tomorrow. So That's what I have to say about confidence. Confidence is a battle. It's a journey. It's not a one size fits all. It's taking what you can from this episode and applying it to life. This is your, your sign that you are good enough. This is your sign that you are deserving of all the things your sign to spend a little time with you and clean up the things that are in your control and then clean up your mindset because it's just, it doesn't feel good when you're talking bad to yourself. So be present, be kind and make a change. Um, we're going to play another advice right in this one's a call in and then we'll do one right in and then oh, yeah, we'll be I like here. this right. Okay. I just read it. We're going to listen to this one first. This one is a listener call in. Remember my number is six, one, two, four, seven, zero, seven, five, six, nine. That's how these people got their write-ins. And yes, we did change the tone of their voice so that you couldn't recognize them. So second one coming right now. Hi, I really hope this is good. <laughs> this is not please disregard this message. I have an advice. I have been seeing this guy for a couple weeks now. We've been on like six ish dates. And um, he recently just like invited me over to his house and we did hook up and it was really great. But now he's, he's just like horrible at texting. And he said that from the beginning that he's just like not on his phone very much. And I just don't know if that's a cop out or if I'm like expecting too much. But, like, every time we have plans, he he's not, like, he doesn't play completely, but he's, like, late or he has to reschedule or you have to move it later because he has really awkward work hours. So he works till, like, 9 p.m. every day. And I know that's true because he works in a restaurant, but 
I don't know. I just can't tell. I just don't want it to be like a booty call or something because I'm really not interested in that. And I was just listening to the episode with you and Taylor, and I felt like you guys had such good advice and were kind of like describing the situation that I was in. Like if he doesn't call you or like text you and just be like, how's your day? And make that effort. Is it not worth it? Um, I just don't know what to do. Please help. Also, it's funny because he, I was to after high school and he went to Chan. And I know he graduated with Taylor. So he does, he like, he would know who he is. I don't want to like say his name, but Ah, <laughs> oh no way Wait, that's so okay funny. so he's he's someone we know of we're not gonna give any other details away don't worry but okay girlfriend do you have any initial thoughts i don't want i'm i'm gonna come in hot with my thoughts but okay. maybe you if you have anything off the bat i think the place or the part that kind of alarms me a bit is the kind of being flaky but not totally flaking because if you really I know it's like they, if they wanted to, they would, but like if you really are set on a date or like hang out with someone, you're not gonna, if you really like them, you're not gonna like be that flaky because that's kind of just shows that you don't really care. Like, yeah. I think he maybe is really busy and busy with work, but he's not really putting you as a priority. So you just have to mm -hmm. ask yourself if you're okay with it being kind of wishy washy or if you need someone where it's like you have plans, he's gonna be there. Assertiveness can be attractive too. Yeah. I'm completely with you. That was my biggest flag is like this wishy-washiness. Yeah. Like, I don't know, something about him not being for sure that the plans are going to work and then like changing the plans. It shows your priorities and it shows like, okay, well, what did he, did he want to get a drink after work with his buddies or like someone from work and like left you hanging? Like I would ask yourself is every time we're hanging out a hookup because then you probably know the intentions of this person. Have you gone on real dates before? Have you made it like apparent that that's a priority for you? I think when we get nervous, like, oh my God, is this just a hookup or is this going to turn into something? We retract what we would actually say in the situation mm -hmm. and how we actually feel. And I think that is a complete and utter loss for ourselves because we don't get what we want. We don't say what we want and we let whatever happens happens. No, no. You are in control. So if it was me in the situation, I would say, you know, I'm not comfortable like this, just this ha being a hookup. If that's your intentions, that's fine. But, um, I'd rather go on a date than hang out after 10 PM and like, say what you mean. Like, I think we are way too timid too of like worrying that that's going to scare somebody away when in reality, that might just be the freaking truth of it. Yeah. So, and also his inconsistency could be unattractive to you and that's yeah. your opinion. So mm -hmm. I think maybe in, if I was in that situation, I would retract a little from being so engaged with him and I would actually see like kind of step on the outside and see if he's going to reach out and make plans with you. Cause if he doesn't, he's not really making you a priority at yeah, all. Yeah, exactly. Shouldn't just be one way. No, never one way. Find, find yourself in this situation again and say like, what am I actually okay with? And then see if that person can match what you're looking for. Don't fall victim to whatever he's willing to give you. Yes. Um, and it not matching with what you want, say what you want, be assertive with that. And if it doesn't, if it doesn't match up and he's like, Oh, I wasn't really like vibing with that or something like, I'm sorry. You're not worth my time. Yeah. Actually. Oh, you don't really like me now that I want to go on dates. Yeah. That's I'm sorry. You, you do get not the F away from me. You. Yeah. Like, you don't want literally. a man that if, if you wanting a date is asking a lot, then that you do not want. Well, didn't that. that just change how we looked at the situation though? It's like, yeah. um, excuse me, yeah, sir. You're the prize, honey. You don't want me now? Because and now I, I really just... want to know who it is, but I know, I know, Fuck. I know. <laughs> okay. Last listener, right. in. we are so late for our date with our cousins. They're going to kill us, but you know what? We're just going to roll with it. We're going to do one more because I love this you guys. Good. This is a call set advice. It says, Hey, Sid, I need some advice involving my boyfriend's friend group. So my boyfriend has a friend group of guys and their girlfriends, eight of us in total. Also keep in mind, I'm 20 years old and my boyfriend and his friends are 27 to 30. I have always been comfortable with being around older people. Every one of my closest friends are 30 with a family. However, whenever I hang out with my boyfriend's friend group, it is always uncomfortable. We've also hung out about three or four times now. I do not feel like they are trying to get to know me or include me in anything. There was one point where no one had spoken in two hours during us hanging out. The guys I don't have much a problem with, but the girls don't seem to like me. One of the girls is also my age. 
I will try and have a conversation with them and ask them about school and life and they don't reciprocate it back to me at all. I have expressed to my boyfriend that I feel uncomfortable around them and he kind of just blows it off. I don't think he understands how it really makes me feel. Am I crazy? I don't want to be the girlfriend that causes problems, but this really does make me feel a type of way. Oh, and they also have a group chat that I'm not in. Okay. I need to start on this because okay. this, I was like smiling at this, not because it's funny, because it literally happened to me. Wait, really? Can you think of who <gasps> said, oh this my is God. literally my situation. I didn't even think of that. I was 20, um... 21. 21. And they were 27 oh or 28. Yeah. My God. So I didn't even think girl, of that. Whoever wrote this in, I feel you there. Cause I, this was literally my situation. Um, a couple, two summers ago, I think, but yeah, I was talking to a guy that was 28. Um, and he, we always were around his friend group mm. of girls and guys. The guys were pretty good. Liked me. Um, the girls did not. And they never got to know me. They never asked me questions. It was so uncomfortable that I, I actually got anxiety that. from it. Um, there was a lot of drinking involved too. I just never felt included. And mm -hmm. I also was feeling like you thinking, oh my gosh, am I the problem? Like, am I being the crazy girlfriend? But no, what my best advice for this situation is first of all, tell, and it seems like you have told him how you feel, tell your boyfriend that you're feeling uncomfortable. And if he doesn't a say something to them mm -hmm. and say, Hey, you need to make an effort with my girlfriend and B make more time alone with you guys than fucking run. Literally. Oh I can't even tell you when she told me about oh my these God. this makes me kind of angry because it would, happened to me. I borderline was like, I'm going to show up to the bar and I'm going to tell these girls a freaking piece of my mind. Same with the guys, little turds. I'm like, don't mess with my family. First also, of all, they're probably jealous of you. Well, it's a usually you might be a threat to their yeah. like mans that hasn't been totally like maybe faithful over in the corner that's you know over there and they've been on and off dating for like five years like yeah you know there's there's always a, a scenario and a narrative whatever but here's my thing is the people that you are around with your partner are going to be the people that are around forever yeah and if you can't tolerate them now my god you're not gonna be able to tolerate them when they're going on their batch party yeah. or like when you've got kids and you're like what the hell you're going to the bar like I don't even know these guys. Like they never make an effort with me. So in the worst way, and I'm so sorry to say this, it is a huge reflection on your partner. It is a huge reflection of who they are. Especially and, if he's brushing it off. Yeah. Which that's exactly what my situation. Exactly. Did. So I'm not saying like reconsider your whole relationship, but I am saying that like, if this is a big enough deal and it doesn't get any better, shit could hit the fan and it's not going to be fun. And I would not be okay with Jordan's friends being horrible people. And I will tell you what, there's been a friend that was around one time that said a very terrible comment. And I, I told him off right there. And you know what Jordan did? He was on my side. He was like, yep, babe, that was, that's icky. I'm really bothered by that. All this stuff. Like that's your partner and that they should be bringing you in with, you know, like helping hands and welcoming mm -hmm. arms into their friends together. In, yeah together. The group chat thing doesn't bug me as much. I don't know how long you've been dating this person, but if they were already a friend yeah, group, that's, that's just kind of their chat. I mean, yeah. it kind of makes sense, but for them to not make an effort and not take you seriously because maybe of your age or maybe they're just like, oh, okay, another girl like around, yeah. like that's a reflection of everybody in the group, including your significant other. So please, please, please take into account that and what you deserve. And you are not crazy. No. Okay. You are, you have, your feelings are valid. Amen. That uncomfortable feeling that you're getting is your, the energy around you. That's exactly mm -hmm. what I felt. And it's, that's also valid. So yeah, I would just say, have a serious talk with your boyfriend. If you really do see a future with him and if he doesn't make a change for it to be more welcoming for you, then I would skadoodle. Yeah. It's time to run. I'm not, I and who hate wants to hang people, out with people that are shitty. I know. I hate telling people like to break up. Cause it's like, we only know this piece of the relationship. I'm not saying like, go break up. I'm just saying if this doesn't change, it's, it's around forever and you're not going to get away from it. And stand and for up me, for yourself. Exactly. And for me, that's not okay. That's my opinion on that. I'm, I'm good luck to everybody who wrote in or who called in. I love you guys so much. This is, it means everything to me that you're looking to me for advice. I have unbearable amount that I like literally can't even get to. So I'm like, Oh my God, I got to like do 90 episodes. I'm going to start to do more on social of these just so I can get to more sooner. But I appreciate you. I'm almost to 10 K on YouTube and I'm not going to lie. 
If I get to 10K on YouTube, I will start blogging a little bit. Oh like my God, vlogging, yeah. Blogging. I feel like the people love that. Even when it's just like while I'm getting ready or like, you know, while I'm like doing something in the car, like I'm just going to bring my camera around and do those things. So that's only if I get to 10K and I think I need like 30 more um, followers. Oh, cool. Um, which I'm like, oh my God, 10K on YouTube. This is kind of fun. Yeah. So um, give me a follow over there if you can, if you haven't already. Um, many more episodes to come. I have Susie Evans from The Bachelor coming on. I've got um, somebody who owns a... Uh, house like non-toxic chemo chemical company coming on like a cleaning company, but their story is insane, oh, wow. insane. So I really want you guys to hear that that's coming up. I also have someone coming on to talk about mental health, um, uh, like different autoimmune diseases and like how that affected who they are careers. There's a shit ton coming. So stick around. Um, I appreciate you being here and coming along with my journey of growth because confidence is a journey and I'm on it with you. You're a work in progress. Work in progress, baby. Okay, we gotta go. Bye. Love ya. Bye. Love ya.